Thank you, Your Honor. I'm ready. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Um, I want to thank this honorable court for hearing me today. And I take great pride and honor in presenting this particular issue on appeal in light of the position that this courthouse and the name of this courthouse being the John Adams Courthouse and that just a few feet from this honorable courtroom exists the handwritten Declaration of Independence which I find particularly important in this particular appeal since the first few sentences talk about <coughs> property, the unalienable rights of property ownership, like the life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. What is handwritten and what is usually mistaken in the printed form is that the pursuit of happiness was originally written as protecting property in the pursuit of property. Of course, the amendment is broader, or that is the alteration is broader it takes into account the emotional component of property ownership. The second portion of the Declaration of Rights, um, as I stand here, my right to present or my right to be here, my right to own property, it's also my responsibility and my duty to bring this appeal to you. As the Declaration of Independence proceeds with that to secure the rights Governments are instituted among, person, among persons deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That when any, any form of government becomes destructive in these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. But when a long train of abuses and, urs and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute depositism, it is their right, it's their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Now, when I refer to the city in my brief, I refer to the, I'm not referring, that is, to the people of the city of Boston. I'm referring to the depositism called the mayor's office, who has been using the powers of the city's resources, like the city's legal department, funded by these people of the city, whom he does not represent but by guys and ruse. Now, it's my responsibility to be here today, and this historically, the brief does not describe the history of this case. City employees in a ruse to secure a, and procure a fraudulent eviction without warrant entered a property, as the police report indicated, because of a barking dog on Beacon Hill. This barking dog was barking, saying, get away, leave this property, it's not your right to be here. The city has retained that property, had taken in inspectors, which has been found unlawfully seized property out of my apartment without right stationed an armed guard there for seven days to keep me from my property. And then after one and a half days, had a sanitarian clean the place up and announce two days later that the place was clean and sanitized, but yet the city went to the Boston Housing Court to procure that eviction. Six days later, they went in and they testified under oath, city employees, that the place needs to be condemned. We need to have an execution. She must be kept out. Six days after the sanitarian said it was clean and sanitized, there was no reason for condemnation. City employees have kept the property until the court ordered, the BMC ordered, Judge Somerville ordered not only once, twice, then ordered again motion to compel. The ADA had his hands up. We can't get the information from the city. We're trying to get the information from the city employees. That is, the order was to evaluate the property that was taken. Prior to that, the property had been ordered by the Boston Housing Court to be returned, but the city kept ignoring those orders despite the orders from Judge Karakakis to return the property. The city has maintained a constant vigilant to keep the property, which was exculpatory. Now, this court has, as a preliminary matter, under appeal, will only reverse 
a single justice if there is an abuse of discretion or a clear error of law. Here, there is that clear error of law. Justice Ireland ordered that he found the petition to be filed by the Commonwealth. Clearly, the petition was filed by the city of Boston. <laughs> Clearly, the petition looks as if it was filed by the Commonwealth. Clearly, the petition is signed by the, by the city. The city, not the Commonwealth. Judge Ireland, single justice, erred as a matter of law when he said that he found the petition was filed by the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth may well have a particular right if, in fact, as this court has found in Commonwealth versus Sacco, that there was some jurisdiction or lack of jurisdiction that the lower court made in returning property or ordering the return or not ordering the return of property. This court has said that. Specifically, they do, Commonwealth could come here on a 211-3. Here, the city of Boston, a third party intervener who wanted no doubt to keep that property because it was exculpatory. It would benefit them to keep the exculpatory evidence and my failure to produce the exculpatory evidence in, at trial for a criminal prosecution <coughs> would inevitably lead to a, pro to a conviction, which it, which it did, because we did not have the property. And then, even if there was a civil action on what they found was this unlawful search and seizure, the property that disclosed other evidence on the civil remedies or relief I would seek inevitably was kept from me from this property that the city retained. The city has a, an unjust, has a huge interest. But let me go back to the wrong facts that Judge Ireland based his decision to make an order. That order being that, well, he was going to issue some sort of fact finding on the disposition of the property. He found that the lower court did not abuse their discretion. At that point, the 211-3 petition should have been denied entirely without any additional orders. It should have been denied immediately when they found out that it wasn't the Commonwealth filing it, but it was the city of Boston filing it. Needless to say, those errors Therefore, that the facts that the single justice found are clearly erroneous, created an error of law as those facts made the basis of the further judgment and error. The single justice applied the law to the wrong set of facts. Then he ordered that the property, which was rightfully returned, should be disposed of. Well, that's forfeiture, governmental forfeiture, which requires an evidentiary hearing. As to its use, Judge Ireland found that its use must be disposed of or that its use was hum somehow to be disposed of, that the property, quality of the property, was to be disposed of without conducting an evidentiary hearing. That's governmental taking without due process. That is an error of law as well as an abuse of his, his discretion to order that property to be disposed, especially in light of that property being what the defendant in a criminal prosecution considered exculpatory. To date, if Judge Ireland made a decision, he had to have made a decision that that property caused a nuisance so that it would be destroyed. Now, Justice Sossman had found in a case called Allison versus Barbary Homes, 12 Mass Lawyers Report 338, that there is, she, she wrote that there is perhaps no more impenetrable jungle in the entire law than that which surrounds the word nuisance. It has meant all things to all people, and it has been applied indiscriminately to everything from alarming advertisement to a cockroach baked in a pie. The term nuisance is a ground of liability, usually results in confusion, and frequently is a method of avoiding precision in analysis. Judge, saw, Judge Single Justice de, ordering disposal of the property in lieu of finding that the, single that the lower court had not abused its decision, abused his discretion. I guess he must have found nuisance.
This Erickson, your time is up. Thank you. May I close? You may have 30 seconds to Thank close. Thank you. Thank you. This court can find that the reversal of that property, of that disposal requirement, may not have um, validity, but it does, because we still are, the facts in the history of this case demonstrate that this city has been misrepresenting itself from the start in execution of eviction, in per holding property, in destroying property, and keeping that. This court should vacate that order and of single justice. It all should also should expand its reach into the criminal prosecution case, which is now on appeal in the appeals court as P1418. Look into that case to showing what the city has done with its witnesses lying on stand, which is found Thank after you. autopsy, and to reverse the conviction and vacate that order. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Boswick. This is actually a case by the city, is it not? Not the Commonwealth. It is, Your Honor. Okay. Good morning, Your Honors. Elizabeth Bostwick for the City of Boston. Um, the city received a copy of a rebuttal brief that was filed by Ms. Erickson this morning, um, and this, the city would move to strike that brief and certainly would object to any factual um, contentions made by Ms. Erickson in that brief. Um, at this point, unless there are any questions, the city is willing to rest on its brief. Are, are there any public health statutes or regulation that govern the, dispos the disposal of uh, dead animals? Your Honor, I don't know of that, um, but certainly there are public health, um, there is the public health statute, Chapter 111, that uh, gives the city standing to um, exercise its police powers to prevent nuisances. Um, and there are, I believe, um, public health regulations that do talk about the disposal of um, biological materials as well. Um, the city assumes that Ms. Erickson complied with the order, um, and therefore this is all kind of moot um, because the property has been turned over to Ms. Erickson. The city does not possess any more of her property. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honors.